delicious Singapore hawker food at Maxwell Food Centre. Welcome to another food adventure with Getting Lost. Today, we are doing an ultimate food guide to Maxwell Food Centre. Yes, this is the ultimate guide to tell you, to tell you, to direct you, to make sure when you come to Maxwell Food Centre, you can eat and try all the good food by just watching this video. So join me after the intro and I will guide you to all the good food. Delicious, yummy, hawker food. Welcome back! So this is Maxwell Food Center. If you want to know how to get here, what I will do is I will leave a link at the end of the video or you can look at the description down below. I will also leave some links there for you to click. Anyway, this is Maxwell Food Center. Maxwell Food Center was actually originally known as Maxwell Market and is located at the junction of South Beach Road and Maxwell Road and is a very popular hawker centre near the central business district of Singapore. This Maxwell Market itself, this Maxwell Market was opened on the 17th of November 1928 and it's been a market, a wet market and also a food centre or hawker centre since then but the wet market has been phased out and what we have now what remains now is a hawker centre with all the delicious all the good food that remains here for you to eat and in this video if you watch all the videos until the end you will find that we have I have eaten at this food center and I have shown in this video all the good food that you, when you come here you must eat, you must try because the food here and, and if you ask anyone, any Singaporean, everyone knows this place because this is a haven for delicious hawker food that you have to come here and try. Very delicious. Yummy yummy up my tummy so so good wow really really and this place here is one of the better food centers in Singapore so let's start our food adventure here at this shop called Hokey Porridge yes Hokey Porridge a place that sells good porridge Hong Kong style porridge the porridge here is good. Don't take my word for it. It's okay, I will show you the porridge earlier. But here is the menu of the different types of porridge you can have. And the prices too. Besides porridge, I also like their homemade tofu, which you can also order. Or they also have a dim sum and a steam buns that you can also order like char siu buns, uh, big buns, you know, lotus fruit buns but what I really like here is actually their yeah, porridge so this porridge is the century egg porridge and the century egg by itself costs $3.50 if you have an additional egg it's the extra $0.50 cent. and uh, condiments on top you have some chives and also deep fried shallots in oil and if you mix up the porridge you can see the century egg and even the egg and minced meat inside so first of all when you eat the porridge the porridge itself is seasoned nicely smooth and you just need to mix it let it cool down a bit before you eat it and when you order your porridge they actually cooked it in front of you 
as per as you order it. So it's good. And the polish here, you can look at the consistent consistency here. Nice and smooth and really comforting. Like I said earlier, seasoned well, done very well, very delicious. One of the things that you have to eat here if you like porridge. Delicious. Look at that. I like porridge too. It was fantastic. A very good porridge and opens to late at night too. So do come down here and definitely give it a try. Another popular porridge shop is here and it's called Jun Jun Porridge. And at Jun Porridge, this shop has been around a long time and previously what they were famous for is together when you order your porridge, you can also order a plate of like uh, raw fish that you eat together with your porridge. But because of the health scare, uh, they don't have this dish anymore. So what they do is they do serve normal porridge and earlier was the menu and the prices for the porridge. Here I ordered the century egg porridge with chicken. Cost me $3 and an extra 30 cents for an egg. So here is the porridge itself. The main difference from this porridge and the previous porridge we saw, which was the first item on our food adventure, was the porridge itself is not as smooth as the previous porridge and it's also a little watery and you also have spring onions on top there with um, deep fried shallots and also this uh, preserved vegetable okay, that adds a bit, gives the porridge a bit of crunch and saltiness and also they also have a ginger in this so the ginger will give it a nice gingery spiciness to the porridge so you mix it all up you can see all the different ingredients in there the, salt, salt, uh, the century egg the chicken and first of all the porridge itself is nice and savory and also slightly peppery and crunchy from the preserved salted vegetables Overall, when you first eat the porridge, it may be bland for the first bite, but after a while, it gets much, much better the more you eat it. And this porridge here is also a very popular porridge and also a very good um, breakfast item. And this shop here only sells porridge for the breakfast crowd and the lunch crowd. After that, they will close shop. So if you do want to eat this, porridge you have to come here for lunch or breakfast but it's still a very good very delicious very hearty and very filling and delicious porridge for you to eat yummy so let's continue with this shop here called china street fritters this place sells uh, china style fritters or Ngo Hiang and these are two shops there are actually two shops here at Maxwell Food Center we're going to cover both but this food item here is slowly um, disappearing from the Singapore hawker food scene because it's a bit hard to prepare all the different types of fritters but at this shop itself what you can do is you can order a set which cost me $5.20 it comes together with um, noodles and a variety of different types of rolls. So first of all, the noodle, it's uh, just bihun, norm, ordinary bihun, which is a uh, rice noodle with a bit of bean sprouts and cooked in soya sauce. Quite ordinary, quite okay. Then these are the assortment of fritters. And it comes together with two sauces, a chili sauce on the left and a sweet sauce on the right. So these are all the different types of fritters with cucumber. Right at the bottom there is the meat roll. And then there's the egg roll and then you have the sausage and then you have the liver roll so these are the variety of things that comes together in the set the fritters here are still slightly warm which means it has been cooked recently which is very good okay let's start first of all with the sausage here the sausage here is a bit meaty not fried savory but other than that it's just okay then this is the liver roll so there's a liver inside there and then there's a bit of vegetables 
and then they wrap it up in like a binker skin. Then next is the egg roll, which is a egg item, and then underneath that is the meat roll. The meat roll itself is savory, meaty, and sweet. It has a very nice meat fragrance to it, and it's fried nicely. It's a nice fried outer skin, but unfortunately, it's a bit small. Then you have the egg roll, which is nice and crunchy. The outer layer is nice and crunchy. It's eggy, it's soft in the middle, and flowery inside and goes very well with the sauce. Overall, a very interesting dish. I quite like it. And if you're here, you should give it a try while it's still here. And next up is the next store that actually sells the fritters too. And this shop is called Hapki. And they also sell uh, Mo Hyang or Chinese fritters. And this shop here also have a set, a menu where you can order for one person which this one here instead costs you $5.80 which is slightly more expensive and these are all the items you can see here there are also extra items you can order like a century egg but that doesn't come together with the set and the set also comes together with uh, noodles which is the bihun noodles which is rice noodles and the sauce is also the same you have a sweet sauce and also a spicy sauce the noodles itself is still the same, but it's slightly more flavor flavorful than the previous one. This is the sweet sauce on the left, and on the right is the chili sauce. Then this is the whole plate of all the different types of uh, fritters you get. So you here you also get a sausage, and then you but here you also get tofu, and then you also have a fish ball, a meat roll, and an egg egg roll or something like an egg cake like that. Let's first talk about the meat roll. The meat roll itself is actually nice and meaty and surprisingly sweet. It's a very small roll, but even though it's small, it has a very good flavor to it, which I quite like. Then you also have the sausage. The sausage actually tastes very similar to the meat roll, but slightly less flavorful. And then there's also the egg cake or the egg roll here, which is nice and crunchy and dense and also a bit oily it's like a dense oily cake then the tofu itself quite nice you know, nice outer layer soft tender inside and goes very well with the sauce it's the same also with the fish ball overall another interesting dish and something you should try if you're here at this food center And let's, let me bring you to one of my favorite dessert shops here at Maxwell Food Center, which is this shop here called 75 Peanut Soup. And here they have they serve traditional soup dessert, dessert soups. And they have three flavors. They have uh, peanut soup, red bean, and tau suan. What I really like is the peanut soup here. And you can, this soup itself, this soup cost me $1. And if you want to add in glutinous rice ball, it will cost you either $1.50 or $2 depending on how many glutinous rice ball you want. But what I really like here is this, this soup. The peanuts are nice and soft and smooth. And the soup itself is smooth and has a very nice nutty aroma and also a soya bean taste to it. Very delicious, totally delicious. One of the best peanut soup desserts I've eaten in Singapore and if you like desserts, this is something you must try. And finally, we are at our last stop for this adventure here today. We are at this shop called Tian Chen Food and they sell traditional food and snacks. Here you can get yam cakes, pumpkin cakes, uh, prawn fritters, even glutinous rice. And what I ordered from here, I ordered two items, which is the yam cake and pumpkin cake. And it came together with a sachet of dark soya sauce and sambal. Here is the yam cake. And on the right is actually the pumpkin cake. 
So these cakes are not your traditional scents where you western cakes. These are more of steamed Chinese cakes. And these cakes are mainly either yam or pumpkin mixed together maybe with rice flour and then a bit of ingredients to add, give it flavor like dried shrimps, a bit of meat, you know, some spices, you know. And then you steam it to have this kind of cake. And this item is actually a popular item in the past for breakfast. So you people used to eat this for breakfast. But nowadays, uh, not so popular um, because it's a bit oily. But this cake here is not too oily. And you can also can see once I cut the cakes, you can also see that in the cross section there, pieces of yam and pumpkin in there. Overall, interesting. Um, the cakes, as you saw from the menu earlier, cost me two fifty each, which is quite affordable, very affordable, and also quite yummy. I quite like the the yam cake and pumpkin cake from this shop. And thank you very much for joining me for my adventure here today. And don't forget, this is only part one. Yes, only part one because. There's so much good food here at Maxwell Food Center that I can't possibly ever feel do it in only one video. So I separate out into two videos. This is part one. Part two is coming up next. Hope you stay tuned for that. I think it will come tomorrow. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoy what you saw so far. More coming up soon. And before we go, Please do me a favor, please help me by liking my video, sharing my video, and also subscribing for my channel. And don't forget to ask your friends, family members, acquaintances, co-workers, anybody around you to do the same thing. It's for their own good. Yes, they need to know more about good food in Singapore. And before we go, please remember the most important thing, the thing that you must do is to join me for my next food adventure. See you then. Bye-bye.